Good morning. Good morning, Matt. Why are you leaving this job that so many people, like Joe Cummings, uh, love you for? It's funny. It is uh, the best food job on earth. It's a dream job. I think everybody wants to be a restaurant critic. I've been doing it for 10 years. Yeah. I started at Toronto Life 10 years ago, and I've been skulking around the city, skulking <laughs> into restaurants, you know, these places that I love for that long. And at some point, you know, you can be at the world's greatest banquet, you know, the greatest meal in front of you, but at some point, you're just full, and it's time to do, you know, all sorts of other things I'm so excited about about doing I'm not leaving food though I'm not going away I'm not gonna stop writing do you do you, you love food and I've been in your house when you've cooked food I mean you are somebody one of my who, favorite things I say you eat like you're going to the electric chair so many times. <laughs> just kind of bring it on do you, when it's a job do you fall out of love with food a little bit because you have to to eat? I think that's a risk. You know, one of the first rules about being a restaurant critic is you're not allowed to complain about restaurant critics because, or being a restaurant critic, because it's such a great thing to have in life, to do in life. But you know, that's a risk. And, and part of it is, I didn't want that to happen to me. When you eat as a job, you know, the highs are amazing. Yeah. You go to incredible restaurants, especially in a city like Toronto. But you also spend a lot of your time going, everybody's been to mediocre restaurants. You do that for a living as well. So, you know, your hit rate may be, you know, for mediocre for one great at some point you know it's been great but it's time to you know to go to the restaurants you want to go to what's been the biggest change it's hard to sum it into one thing I'm sure but in, in the time that you've been eating professionally in the city what's the biggest change that you've seen in Toronto it's so hard to nail down just one I mean one of the biggest ones and one of the most exciting ones for me has been that the borders, the psychological borders, the, the physical borders in this city, in, in the region have fallen. I think, you know, people used to go to the suburbs for suburban food. They used to come downtown for urban food. It was steak frites and pizza versus, you know, biryani and, and you know, regional Chinese. That's over. Um, you know, you see great restaurants, great chefs, great restaurateurs and ideas coming downtown. And you see the outflow the other way as well. And I think that's one of the most exciting things about the city. I think people don't default to pizza anymore and and I think Toronto has become the way we eat has become just as multicultural uh, it's becoming that way anyway as who we are as a people mm. and and I think that's one of the things that makes us one of the greatest food cities on earth I mentioned and we were talking about this with Joe Cummings the, there was a profile of, of one of your colleagues Pete Wells who uh, writes about restaurants for the New York Times this is in the New Yorker. It's a long profile. And one of the things they talked about was the power that he has. And I hinted at this. I mean, you know, you get a good review and chefs are delighted. Restaurant owners are delighted. You get a bad review and that can mean the end of your business. I'm really happy to leave some of that pressure behind. Are be you comfortable with, you. with that power? I, it's, it's always a funny thing. You never want to gloat about that power. You never want to revel in that power. You never want it to become too much a part of who you are because it's, you know, it, it is a strange thing. You really have to respect it. And, you know, there are restaurants that have done very, very well after a review in the newspaper. Um, you know, you get calls from restaurateurs who say, thank you, you know, because of what you wrote. People get what we're doing or people are coming in. Um, the joy of the power is you get to introduce people to, you know, to new things, to restaurants that, that somebody needs to champion, to, you know, new ideas. And you get to also, there's all, you know, in any industry, there's a ton of cynicism. And restauranting isn't any different than that. You get people who jump on trends, who do a, you know, crappy job, who charge way too much money, whatever. And so to be able to call people on that as well, I think it's it's a really important function. And I think restaurant criticism is, is an important function. And, and uh, you know, that's one of the, the joys about it. Do you, struggle, also pressure. Do, do you struggle with the fact that people would say, I mean, he doesn't have any skin in the game. And he's, he's just, you know, you're, you're making decisions that, that are huge in terms of the impact on, on, on people's lives. Oh, of course. I mean, people are going to say that about any critic in any, in, you know, in any function, whether you're an art critic, an architecture critic, whatever. Um, I, I think not having skin in the games is, you know, one of the things about it. You're able to look at it, and it's not like you just go to a restaurant once and, you know, that's it. You go two, three times, in some cases four times, you know, you're bringing, you know, as much knowledge, as much history to bear, and you're talking to the restaurateurs as well and asking them how yeah. to do it. So, you know, a critic is part of it, but you're also a reporter. So you try to get it right. You talked about skulking around this city. I mentioned there are no photos of you until now online. There aren't a whole lot, no, no. How do you, ma how have you managed that? 
You know, it's funny. When I started, uh, I went online. There were a few photos of me. For whatever reason, I think it's because I'm a funny-looking guy. I hadn't had my photo taken that much. You just rolled your eyes. Um, <laughs> you know, but, but but I, you know, I, I called people and I said, "Can you take that photo of me down?" And you know, the funniest thing is, um, David Besmogus, the author. He may be surprised to hear this. When you search my name, his my photo, photo comes. A up? photo of David Besmogus comes out, which has been the greatest thing. So I hope he's got really good service over the last few years. <laughs> um, it hasn't been. That hard though is the strange thing. There are restaurants that have had my photo on the wall. You know, there are restaurants. The Momofuku chain, you know, took my picture from their hidden camera. So they try and spot people. you when you come in. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, that's a part of the job. I think it happens to everybody. One critic I know said that when he walks into a restaurant, there's a red laser beam on on his head, and that's sometimes a feeling. But you try, you try to do your best, and I think in general it's worked out pretty well. What is it like to be? I mean, you're on Facebook Live. People watching. You're, now you're out. I have no idea. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I mean, I, you know, part of you wonder is are people even going to care? Mm. Uh, you know, one of the things I'm moving into that I'm not allowed to say anything about is I'm going to do a TV show. That's part of my next plan. Congratulations. So, thank you. As you know, so so that's going to be uh, you know a part of it, and it'll be a little strange, I think, to walk into a restaurant and not only to be recognized, but for people to let on and they, that, they, that they recognize you. Two very quick questions to end. One is obvious. What are you going to miss most about the job? Oh, just the, you know, the great places going in. I, I don't like to use the word discovering because, you know, you never actually discover anything. But going in, finding stuff that's amazing and really being able to enthuse about, uh, about it. Um, you know, and also just seeing, having such a unique and amazing vantage point on the econ the economy, the sociology, the demography, the geography of the city. Restaurants say so much about a place, and it's been an absolute blast being able to be a part of that. What's the restaurant that you reviewed that you go back to the most? The place that you had to go to for work and that you'll go and eat as much as you can. There's a there's there there are a few. It really depends on you know the day and my mood. But you know for special occasions, I don't think there's a better restaurant in the city than Agilis right downtown. They do such an incredible job. They're constantly getting better, constantly striving, and they can stand up to any place in the world. So that place is a real pleasure for me. I don't think I'll ever stop going there. But there's a ton, you know, from little biryani places, you know, one two snacks in Scarborough, mm. this amazing mom and pop Malaysian place. There's a ton of them. You've made us hungry for many, many years. We will miss you in the newspaper. It's a pleasure. Chris Nettlesmith, Globe and Mail's dining critic. His final review in that paper runs tomorrow.